is going on guys Jesse504 here bringing you my WPF week one battle uh, our Chicago Cinders taking on the London Lucarios coached by Ryan Scar and uh, I'm really excited for this uh, first week in a league I feel like is always the most exciting you get to use your squad for the first time see how well you can build with them how well you can perform with them so uh, let's get right into it. In case you missed my draft breakdown, uh, my squad consists of Mega DNC, Cordonite, Zygarde, Toxtricity, Zarude, Vaporeon, Alolan Marowak, Mr. Rhyme, Ditto, Girder, and Kecleon. Um, I think it's a pretty solid squad. Uh, not exactly number one in PRs, but still solid, and I feel like I set myself up to perform with it this season particularly on the back of my incredible Fairy Dragon Steel Core that I'm really excited to use. Um, and now going into his squad, we see he has the top six are the ones that I think that he's going to bring. He has his Landorus, Dusclops, Rotom Wash, Incineroar, Kiram, and Alakazam. I think those six are most likely to come, but I feel like uh, his other five... Uh, Leafeon, Licky Licky, Clefairy, uh, Mega Beedrill, and Metagross. I feel like there's at least merit for Leafeon. I feel like that, other than Dusclops, is probably his best Zygarde check. Um, Mega Beedrill is just fast and it does Mega Beedrill things. It's kind of walled by Corviknight a little bit, but it can still hit it hard. And then Metagross, I feel like it is solid. It, um, it has to be fearing a little Marowak and Zygarde though, so potentially just not going to come. But it would be really nice to have against my Mega Deancy. Um, starting it off, of course, my team builder, we have my Mega Deancy. Um, EV'd to outspeed Landorus creeping Zygarde. And uh, I needed that HP in order to live a an adamant... Incineroar Earthquake. Um, I feel like that's something that could potentially come. So, living uh, that is always really nice. Um, Stealth Rock, Diamond Storm, Play Rough, and Toxic. Um, I feel like an offensive rocker uh, set for DNC this week works really well. And uh, uh, I'm not really sure what uh, I would need to change. Uh, I'm I had Toxic on here just because. I don't really think I need another move to hit anything in particular, so just having Toxic at least to be able to put that on the Dusclops uh, and start whittling that thing down, I feel it could be really helpful. Or just getting a Toxic off on really anything on his team is pretty nice, other than the Alakazam, which obviously is going to be Magic Guard, but still just having Toxic as an option for things that otherwise don't take too much damage is always I think helpful rather than trying to jam a fourth move that might not ever get clicked. Up next um, my Zygarde. Uh, I went for a substitute Dragon Dance set this week. Thousand Arrows was really the only attack I needed. Leafeon isn't exactly the bulkiest uh, and it's not even that it's not good. Um, I have to be wary of Dusclops though, carrying Haze, which would just stop this, but I do have HP to take uh, a Nightshade behind a sub, uh, so it'll take that thing at least a good amount of time to break my subs, and I can always just put a Toxic on that thing and have it uh, just get worn down over time. So. I feel like that was just kind of my best course of action with the Zygarde rather than like forcing Outrage or something. Just Thousand Arrows and Toxic works well enough. Just a little bit of speed uh, to help me outspeed the Mega Beedrill at plus one. Uh, that's about it. Uh, going on up next, Corviknight. This team is going to be built on that Fairy Dragon Steel Core. They're probably going to be the rock uh, coming almost every week, each and every one of them. Um, but I just bought Fizdef Corviknight. It works well uh, against Metagross. It can do well against uh, 
although that thing can have a little bit of coverage for this, but Metagross and really Mega Beedrill, I think this thing stops fantastically. Also Landorus, this thing does really well against. Um, yeah, I have a little bit of speed in case he wants to uh, creep my Corviknight with his Incineroar. I feel like that could potentially be something that he would do um, just to try to catch me. And this little bit of speed helps me uh, feel a little bit safer about being able to click U-turn on it as opposed to just hard switching. Um, and as always, just like having a little bit of chip is nice. But mostly just here to be bulky and can fire off Brave Bird if needed, but probably won't do that too much. Next up on our team, uh, we have the Zerud, um, speed for, uh, it, it has the same amount of speed as Mega Deancey, which is for Landorus, uh, Creeping Zygarde, um, U-Turn, Power Whip, Close Combat, Darkest Lariat. I like having this amount of HP because it ensures that I can live a U-Turn from Landorus, um, which otherwise would just completely destroy me um and then power whip cc darkest lariat uh stabs and cc is really nice to hit kira and hit incineroar um both of which i feel like need to uh just get rocked uh before i can safely win and then um obviously this dual stab and i think that this thing is almost 100% of the time gonna be my lead. Um, having it be pretty much guaranteed to be the fastest thing, um, aside from if he just uses a 252 spread, which I feel like would be kind of annoying because that invalidates my prep a little bit. But uh, if he just did that, and then the landers would outspeed me. But I have the HP to be able to live a U-turn from that thing. So, yeah. Uh, and then next up, I have my Toxtricity. This one I was kind of unsure on if I wanted to bring it or not, but uh, I, I think I vibe well with Toxtricity, so I'm always game to bring it. Um, shift Gear, Overdrive, Sludge with Boom Burst. Um, speed for Scarf Landorus. Uh, and then just kind of able to shift gear up, uh, pop the throat spray, and just go to town. like it did in PBA, but I feel like um, this matchup is potentially a little tough because Alakazam could be coming with a Focus Sash and Toxtricity uh, could be uh, just if I hit it with a Boom Burst and it goes down to one and then it just rocks me. Uh, that would be kind of annoying, but other than that, I feel like I can just chunk down his entire team pretty efficiently, and that's kind of why I wanted this Toxtricity. Um, my other option for this slot on the team was going to be a Cleric Vaporeon, but I feel like Toxtricity just completely can destroy, and I feel like I wanted a solid special attacker this week as well. And then lastly, um, I'm really excited to be able to bring this mod, uh, Mr. Rhyme. Um, Spadaf Mr. Rhyme, I think it catches, or I think it pairs really well with Corviknight this week. Uh, the only problem with that duo is Incineroar, and that's kind of why I wanted to bring Vaporeon, but uh, it still kind of gets rocked kind of hard by Incineroar, so I have this thing, uh, 248 HP, a special attack, 252 Spadaf Calm, uh, it lets me do it lets me switch into Rotom pretty much every time for free, um, which I think is really, really nice. Uh, what else about this? It lets me switch into Kyurem really well, uh, if that thing is running special, although it probably is going to be packing Flash Cannon for my Mega DNC, so I'll have to be a little bit wary of that. But just having a secondary spin option is always nice in case Corviknight goes down. Or, um, I might just want, like, a little bit of speed. Uh, but if we go back to his team real quick, um, we see that, uh, I'm predicting, uh, those six on top, and I feel like I built a team that can handle them fairly well. Um, but I also have options, counterplay options, for the other five. Uh, I think maybe, like, if a Clefairy comes, uh, I'd be incredibly shocked. But... 
if it were to come, I'm not really sure, A, what it can do, and B, I didn't, like, prep extra hard for that, and I didn't, like, intensely prep for a licky licky, but, um, I feel like everything else I have counterplay options for, and even those two, uh, I can still beat. So, all in all, I think that I like my odds here, uh, but I'll see you guys in the battle. Alrighty, I'm bringing you guys a post -com. Probably gonna have to expect these for a while until I get back to my old setup, but while I'm on vacation, post -coms are really the best I can do consistently. Though, I'll, I always try for the live comms, but it just happens that they generally get interrupted. So, uh, on the lead matchup, my new, my lead was predetermined gonna be Zarud, and I didn't really care what he led, it was always just Zarud. And, uh, immediately he leads Rotom Wash, which is probably the best thing for him to lead for me. So I can just fire off a free U-turn, there's no reason for him to stay in. So, I'll just U-turn out, and I can go pretty safely out into my Diancie, because I know that that thing can claim. As he goes Metagross, uh, I was tempted to A, set my rocks, or B, um, make a switch, but I didn't feel like it, and uh, I kind of just wanted to be able to threaten him after, maybe with a defense boost, so that I could live a hit, but I didn't happen to get one, so it's fine. He goes Rotom, and uh, let me just catch up on stuff real quick. Um, so I go Corviknight, um, and he makes a nice read into the Rotom, and then I have to switch again into my Mr. Rhyme, which kind of is a dedicated check to this Rotom. And uh, he Volt switches out, and uh, that's fairly expected. I didn't really want to pull a switch because he revealed the Intimidate. Uh, I felt like I could go Zygarde, but I didn't want to risk anything. So I just throw up a Freeze Dry, and then I have to switch. I go to my Mega DNC. He goes for Parting Shot, which gets Magic Bounced. And I have to switch out now, which I, th I found that like it was fine. I could get into Zarude. I threatened to claim one now. And he gives me Incineroar, which is his only Dark Resist. Now, Darkest Lariat becomes very spammable against him. Out comes the Beedrill, and I have to switch out. Corviknight, the Beedrill can't touch, so he just fires off a U-turn, and I heal most of it off with my leftovers. Um, he goes out into the Rotom, of, of course. I was tempted to go Mr. Rhyme, but I was fearing another Will-O-Wisp. Uh, or I was tempted to go Zygarde, but I was fearing a Will-O-Wisp, so I just went Rhyme. Felt like it was safe, no reason not to. And then out comes the Beedrill, and I go Corviknight on this thing every time, no matter what. It it can knock off, that's fine. Uh, I have Roost for recovery, so I don't even need the leftovers that much. And he just U-turns again. As I just fire off my own U-turn, because I could tell that the Rotom was going to come in. Uh, I didn't really need to stay in, so I could just U-turn out. I knew that he wanted to preserve his Rotom, because once Incineroar and Rotom are down, Corviknight just doesn't die. So I U-turn, get a crit, doesn't really end up mattering I don't think. Uh, just I go into my Corviknight, I know I can live a banded Thunder Punch, so I just take the time to roost up. And he reveals Ice Punch and he also reveals that in the calcs he wasn't banded. And I fire off a U-turn, uh, and the chip here is uh, more significant than you might think because if I was looking at my calcs, I saw, boom, this thing coming in, Lariat can claim now, um, Zarude's already claimed one with the Incineroar kill, but I felt like Darkest Lariat kills everything other than Alakazam if it's Sashed or Rotom, which it would 2 hit KO, or uh, Kyurem, which would also be a 2 hit KO, but um, out comes the Metagross, uh, which he just gave me, uh, so that's pretty nice, um, now I don't have to deal with that, my Diancie's a lot more free. Um, out comes the Kyurem, uh, close combat doesn't quite KO, so I just went out into my Mr. Rhyme as he went for substitute, which was possibly the one thing that I was kind of fearing. Um, he goes for earth power as I break the sub with a psychic, then we do the same thing, he subs, I psychic. I was kind of just wanting to let my Mr. Rhyme go down at this point because I felt that there wasn't really a need to keep it alive. and. 
I decided to slack off this turn, uh, just to heal myself. He he reveals Roost, which I feel like was pretty uh, expected, but uh, I, I could have slacked off again, but I felt like, or I do slack off again actually. I'm talking about next turn, I could have done it again, but I didn't really feel like it was too necessary because at this point he was just fishing for a uh, spadef drop. Uh, he goes for another sub, I break it. Um, at this point, I feel like Mr. Rhyme can probably 1v1 this Kyurem until he gets a drop, but I just want my, uh, I just want the Kyurem to be chipped out and Mr. Rhyme out safely, and then, uh, Zarud can just kinda win from there pretty much. Uh, I could slack off here, but I just choose not to, uh, just to let one of my mons in safely, um. I could have probably gone Corviknight one of these times, but I was just fearing um, something for it. So one last Earth Power finishes off the Mr. Rhyme. Uh, it did its job though. Uh, this Kyurem is low, uh, low enough for a Darkest Lariat to come in and claim it. Um, so Zarud, um, in a sack war that we might find ourselves in, I feel like Zarud can kill everything. I'm obviously Scarfed, I've revealed that. and. I just send out my Toxtricity as he fires off a Hydro Pump into my Shift Gear. I felt like Shift Gear could have claimed here, but like with, other than uh, Sash Alakazam, which I felt like it was just there in the back the entire time, which that thing obviously can revenge anything, but Boom Burst, it gives me my much needed chip on there um, as he Hydro Pumps me to finish me off. If he had missed, then... That would have just been nice. I would have been able to knock the Alakazam down and then have Zarud win right there. But he Hydro pumps me, hits me for 35. I put out a sub. I was just kind of fishing for a miss at this point. Um, I set up a Dragon Dance real quick behind my sub. And I was just hoping that he would miss one. Uh, Dragon Dance. And now I just basically fish for a miss for these next couple of turns. Because uh, if he does miss, Zygarde wins with just um uh with thousand arrows so i was just kind of trying to be patient see if that could happen put out another sub fortunately for ryan he doesn't end up missing any so i'm too low so i just decide time to claim the rotom with a thousand arrows and um i was slower than max speed alakazam but i knew he didn't really have a reason to run max speed alakazam and i'm faster than it now uh because it's obviously just trying to creep diancy and i'm faster than that so uh he takes out my zygarde that's fine uh zarud wins so great game i feel like i played well if a bit predictable in my early game but um, I felt like with the amount of momentum on his team, uh, the only real safe double I could have made would have been going out of the Deancey, uh, when it was Incineroar and when he went Metagross, maybe into, like, Zygarde, something like that, but he did reveal Ice Punch, which would have just been a pain. So, like, maybe out of Incineroar if he had went, uh, into the Metagross, but, I don't know, uh, obviously could have been a little bit cleaner on my side, maybe if I wanted to preserve a little bit of differential by uh, U-turning, or by like going Corviknight and then U-turning, but I was afraid of a Kyurem being behind a sub, that thing could have destroyed me potentially. So just having that as like a safety net, Mr. Ryan being dead at the cost of Kyurem not being behind a sub, that was something I was willing to take. Um, yeah, so that was my week one. We're currently sitting at 1-0 plus 3, which I'm happy about. Uh, and Zarud is 5 kills, so hopefully that's enough to be kill leader after week 1, but we'll see. Uh, until next time, Jesse504, out. Peace.